Hello everyone and welcome back to the set 2 of first and follow solve problems. In this session we are going to solve couple of more solve problems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we are going to observe two more solve problems for determining first and follow. Coming to the first question, find the first and follow of all the non-terminals. So this is the grammar that is given and as you can see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 non-terminals. Now we are needed to find out the first and follow for all the non-terminals. So let's solve it. Now since we are starting off with first of all the non-terminals, we will start off with the last non-terminal. Now as you can see, the production rule is like f can be rewritten as a lowercase f or epsilon. Therefore, in the first of f, we will have the symbols, the lowercase f and the epsilon. Similarly, in the first of e, look at the production rule of e. e can be rewritten as the lowercase g or epsilon. And therefore, in the first of e, we will have the symbols, the lowercase g and epsilon. Now, coming to d, observe, the production rule is d can be rewritten as uppercase e followed by uppercase f. Now, in order to find out the first of D, we need the first of F. And the first of F has the symbol G. So, in the first of D, we are going to definitely have the symbol G. Now, in first of E, we also have epsilon. So, if we substitute epsilon in place of E, in that case, in order to obtain the first of D, we will need the first of F as well. Now, the first of F has the symbols lowercase f and epsilon. Therefore, the first of D is definitely going to include the symbol F itself. Now, think about a situation. D can be rewritten as E and F. And the first of E and F include epsilon in both of them. Now, if we substitute epsilon in the place of E and F, in that case, D ends up generating epsilon. Therefore, the first of D will also include the symbol epsilon. Now, let's figure out the first of C. Observe the production rule. C can be either rewritten as small b followed by capital C or epsilon. So we have a non terminal at the beginning. Therefore, the first of C will include the symbols b and epsilon. Now let's find out the first of uppercase b. Observe the production. Uppercase b can be rewritten as lowercase c and uppercase c. So basically, the first of b will have the symbol c only. That is, this lowercase c. Now, let's figure out the first of s. Observe the production rule. s can be rewritten as lowercase a followed by uppercase b, uppercase d and lowercase h. So, the first of s will have this terminal symbol a. Let's include that. So, these are all the firsts of all the non-terminals. Let's now figure out the follows. Coming to the start symbol s. Observe, S appears in none of the right hand side of none of the productions. Therefore, in the follow of S, we will only have the symbol, the dollar, which indicates the end of the input stream. Coming to B, observe, the uppercase B appears in here, which is followed by this non-terminal D. So, in order to obtain the follow of B, we will require the first of D. Now, the first of D includes the symbols G, F and Epsilon. So, in follow of B, we are going to have the symbols G and F. Now, since these first has the symbol epsilon as well, therefore, if we replace epsilon in place of D, in that case, the non-terminal B is followed by the terminal symbol H. That means, in the follow of B, we will also have the symbol H as well. Let's now figure out the follow of C. Now, the uppercase C appears in two instances. In this case, this is the rightmost symbol of the right hand side. Therefore, in order to find out the follow of C, we will require the follow of B. And that is the reason why in follow of C, we will have all the symbols of follow of B. Now, let's figure out the follow of D. As you can see, D only appears in here. And the follow of D is this terminal symbol H. So clearly, in follow of D, we are going to have only the symbol H. Let's now try to find out the follow of E. Observe, 
E appears in this particular production rule. So, in order to obtain the follow of E, we will require the first of F. Now, first of F has the symbols F and Epsilon. So, clearly, in follow of E, we are going to have the symbol F. Now, the first of F also includes the symbol Epsilon. Now, if we substitute Epsilon in the place of F, in that case, E turns out to be the rightmost non-terminal in the right-hand side. Therefore, we will need the follow of D in order to find out the follow of E. Now, the follow of D has the symbol H. Therefore, the follow of E alongside F will also have the terminal symbol H. Let's now figure out the follow of F. Observe, F appears in here and it is actually followed by nothing. So, being the rightmost non-terminal on the right-hand side, in order to find out the follow of F, we will require the follow of D, which happens to be H. Therefore, in follow of F, we will have the terminal symbol H only. So, these are all the firsts and all the follows of all the non-terminals of this grammar. Let's now move on to the next question. So, here we are again asked to find the first and follow of all the non-terminals which are S, A, B and C. Now, this particular grammar is a pretty important one. So, I need you to follow the derivation of all the first and follows a bit more carefully. Now, let's begin with the first. Now, as usual, we will start off with the last non-terminal in the row. Now, the production rule is C can be rewritten as either small h or epsilon. Therefore, in the first of C, we will have the symbols small h and epsilon. Now, coming to first of B, we will have the symbols small g and epsilon. Let's now find out the first of A. Now, observe the production rules. A can be rewritten as small d followed by small a or capital B followed by capital C. Now, if we consider this production, A can be rewritten as small d followed by small a. In that case, the first of A is going to include the symbol D, that is, the first terminal symbol in the right hand side. Now, let's consider the next production, that is, A can be rewritten as capital B followed by capital C. Observe, in this case, we will need to find out the first of B. Now, in first of B, we have the symbols G and epsilon. Therefore, in the first of A, we are going to have the symbol small g. Now, in first of B, we also have the symbol epsilon. So, if we substitute epsilon in place of B in here, in that case, the first of A will be obtained from first of C, which has the symbols small h and epsilon. So, in the first of A, we will also have the symbol h. Now, think about it. If both B and C are substituted by the epsilons, at that point, A will also derive epsilon. Therefore, the first of A will also have the symbol epsilon. Let's now find out the first of S. Now, finding out the first of S will be a little time consuming as it involves three different production rules. However, it will be a very interesting one. So, let's figure out. Observe the first production rule. S can be rewritten as capital A followed by capital C, capital B. Therefore, in order to obtain the first of S, we will require the first of A. Now, in the first of A, we have the symbols D, G, H and Epsilon. Therefore, in first of S, we are also going to have the symbols D, G and H. Consider the second production rule. S can also be rewritten as capital C followed by small b followed by capital B. Now, according to this one, the first of S will also contain the first of C. Now, the first of C has the symbols H and Epsilon. Now, since we included the first of A, which has the symbols D, G and H, in the first of S, it also has the symbol H, which is in the first of C. However, if we substitute this Epsilon in place of C in this production rule, in that case, the first of S will include B. So, we are going to include the symbol B in the first of S. Now, consider the last production rule, S can be rewritten as capital B, small a. Now, according to this one, the first of S will also include the first of B. Now, in first of B, we have the symbols G and Epsilon. 
Now in first of S, we already have the symbol G. Now think about this epsilon. If we substitute this one in place of capital B in here, in that case, the first of S will include the symbol A. Therefore, we are going to include the symbol A in the first of S as well. Now coming back to the first production rule, that is S can be written as capital A followed by capital C followed by capital B. Notice one thing, the first of A, B and C, all of them include the symbol epsilon. So if we substitute epsilon in all the places, in that case, S is also deriving epsilon. Therefore, in the first of S, we will also have the symbol epsilon. So these are all the firsts of all the non-terminals. Let's now figure out the follows. Now since the start symbol S doesn't appear in any of the right hand side of any of the productions, therefore in the follow of S we will only have the symbol dollar. Let's now find out the follow of A. Observe, the non-terminal A appears only in this production rule and it is being followed by the non-terminal C. So, the follow of A will include the first of C, which has the symbols H and Epsilon. So, evidently, the follow of A will have the symbol H. Now, think about this Epsilon. If we replace it in the place of C in this production rule, in that case, A will be followed by the non-terminal B. Therefore, the follow of A will include the first of B. Now in first of B, we have the symbol G and epsilon. Therefore, the follow of A will also include the symbol G. Now both B and C have epsilon in their firsts. And if we replace that in these two places, in that case, there is nothing more left to follow A. And since this production rule is being derived from the start symbol, therefore, if we replace epsilon in these two places, the non-terminal A will be followed by the dollar symbol. And that is the reason why in the follow of A, we are also going to include the symbol dollar. Let's now find out the follow of B. Now this one is going to be an interesting one. Observe, the non-terminal B appears in many instances on the right hand side. Let's start off with this particular production rule. Here, B happens to be the rightmost non-terminal in the production rule. And also, this particular right hand side is being derived from the left hand side which is the start symbol. Therefore, the follow of B is going to include the dollar symbol as well. This will also be the result if we consider this particular production rule because in here as well, B happens to be the rightmost non-terminal of this particular production rule which is being derived from the start symbol. Let's now consider the production rule S can be written as capital B followed by A. In here, the non-terminal B is being followed by the terminal symbol A. Therefore, in the follow of B, we are going to have the terminal symbol A as well. Let's now consider this particular production rule. A can be written as capital B followed by capital C. So here the non-terminal B is being followed by the non-terminal C. Therefore, the follow of B will include the first of C, which has the symbols H and Epsilon. And from this, we can clearly say the follow of B will include the symbol H. So, let's include that. Now, interestingly, the first of C also includes the symbol epsilon. So, if we replace that in place of C in here, in that case, the capital B non-terminal becomes the rightmost element of this production rule. Basically, it has got nothing to follow itself. So, like we have seen in the step-by-step -step derivation of first and follow, in cases as such, we are going to consider the follow of the left hand side of the production rule. Therefore, the follow of B will also include the symbols from follow of A. Now, follow of A includes the symbol H, G and dollar. And from these, in follow of B, we already have the symbols dollar and H. So finally, in the follow of B, we will also include the symbol G. Interesting, right? Let's now figure out the follow of C. Now C appears in the right hand side of this, this and this production rule. Now let's begin with the first one. Here, C is being followed by capital B. Therefore, the follow of C will include the first of B. 
and in the first of B we have the symbols G and epsilon. Since epsilon can never be included in any of the follows, therefore the follow of C will definitely include the symbol G. Now first of B also includes the symbol epsilon, so if we substitute that in place of this B in here, in that case C becomes the rightmost non-terminal in the entire production rule which has nothing else to follow. Therefore, we are going to include the follow of S in the follow of C. Now, follow of S includes only the symbol dollar, so let's include that in follow of C now. Let's now consider this particular production rule. Here, C is being followed by the terminal symbol B. So, in follow of C, we are also going to include the symbol B. Now, if we consider this particular right hand side, here, C happens to be the rightmost non-terminal on the right hand side. Now, we know in cases as such, we are going to include the follow of the left hand side of the production rule. Now, observe the follows of A. The symbols are H, G and dollar. Now, from these three, in follow of C, we already have the symbols G and dollar. So, we are going to include the symbol H in the follow of C now. So, let's include that. So, these are the follows of all the non-terminals. So, in this session, we observed to solve problems for determining first and follow. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the process of derivations first and follow of non-terminals are now clear to you. In the next session, we are going to observe the construction of LL1 parsing tables. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.